I'm Mikey Taylor. I'm a professional skateboarder entrepreneur, and you are listening to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. Make sure you tune in. This is a, a special one. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have Mikey Taylor with us. Mikey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. You are a local here anyways, right? So I know you battled some traffic. You had a busy day, but we made it work. We made it work. Yeah. And I'm going to come through. Sometimes I'm off on time, but I'm going to come through for sure. <laughs> no, and I appreciate that, you know, because um, I just know how hectic it is just getting from different place to different place in LA with meetings and stuff to where it's like, I've had people just cancel. And it's like, I don't take it personally. I'm like, look, I, I get it. So I appreciate you, man. And yeah. I know you're going to deliver a lot of great stuff. You got a hell of a story, all the stuff you're doing. So I'm excited. Thank you. I'm excited too. Thank you, man. So, um, What's, I, I like kicking off kind of the, I, I want to kick this off with kind of something funny. So okay. I know you were, you know, you're a professional, uh, you're a former professional skateboarder yeah. and you were in the X Games, yeah. which is pretty damn big. Um, what's like the funniest thing that it's, that happened that you witnessed like behind the scenes or maybe it was like another one of your, uh, you know, friends that was, you know, during the competition. What's something funny you could just kind of share with us? Oh, that happened specifically to X Games. Games. Mm -hmm. If there is something. Oh my gosh. So, uh. <laughs> So, just to put it in context, I wasn't a contest skater. Okay. Right? I didn't skate my first contest until I had been pro for 10 years. Right? So I was super late to the game. And I never was that good at skate parks. Like, I learned how to skate in the street. So, like, whatever. I get invited to go to X Games. Uh, I go to one that's in Brazil. It okay. was like when they tried to make it go international. And, uh, and I'm, like, sitting in this lounge. Like, I sit down, and Tony Hawk sits right next to me. Right? And like, I don't really know Tony Hawk. Like, I've never really <laughs> met him. I sit down and he looks at me and he's like, hey, what's up? And like, I'm not normally an awkward person. And I look at him, I'm like, what's up? Like, <laughs> so weird. And he goes, how'd you skate? And I was like, good. It was like the most awkward conversation where like I'm sitting here next to Tony Hawk going, God, please somebody just sit down next to us. Like, please somebody help me. It was just like, my one time with Birdman was just a full fumble. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, like, X Games, uh, they're so, like, corporate mm -hmm. that, like, they don't allow anything outside of the box to happen. Like, gotcha. it's like, hey, you're here at this time. They're super strict who gets in. You skate at this time. So, like, something going, like, out of schedule isn't normal. Yeah. So I don't have any very good X Games stories. Yeah. That's the only one I was, like, just... Not meeting Tony Hawk that I didn't make a good impression. That's pretty funny. Like, like you still yeah. keep a relationship with him, or no? It's only last time I see him. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Hey, I mean, it's like Tony Hawk, man. That's. And like, I don't get nervous for anyone. Like, <laughs> yeah. dude, like Will Smith can walk in the room. Like, I'm gonna talk to him like totally fine. Like Tony Hawk just fumbled. You know? <laughs> I think we used to play his video game. He had like a video game yeah. called like yeah, Tony Hawk cool. or yeah. something. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome. So take us back within that journey of like when you did start. You know, with like your skateboarding journey. You said you started in the skate parks. Um, what age was this at and like kind of what made you go towards like what what caught your interest to do skateboarding? So So dude basically like at that point I had friends and I was the youngest in our group So I pretty much looked up to them on what was cool. I just wanted to fit in right, right? so like if my friend brought home a bike and it was in a biking I was in a biking, okay. right? And then he got a skateboard. I was like, oh, I want to get a skateboard. Like, I want to be cool. So I got a skateboard. And like leading up to that point, like whenever I do stuff, like whether like it was biking, like I get into biking, I was gonna be the best biker in the world, right? I'd be like super focused, dedicated, and it would last for, like three months. I'd be completely over it, and then be <laughs> on to the next thing, right? With skating, it was like the first thing where like that like obsession just didn't go away. It was like. You know, I started doing it for six months, started doing it for a year. All the kids that, like, I wanted to fit in with stopped doing it. And I was just like, oh, guess I'm on my own here. Yeah. And it was just, like, just this natural, like, I never wanted to stop. And so that's really how my career started was, like, my mom wanted me to get a job, and I didn't want to stop skating. So I figured out some, like, crazy plan to, like, not have to work. Gotcha. And that was, like, this, like, well, if I get sponsored and have sponsored me free stuff, I don't need money. And, and then that just parlayed into, like, my parents on me about having to go to college. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to be done skating. What if I get? I like get my sponsors to pay me, and it was just like I was just trying to avoid working, so like keep skating. It was really <laughs> how it started. Yeah. I like accidentally became pro gotcha. just because I didn't want to stop. Did yeah. you Did you suffer like any like major injuries just like along the way? Because I I just know that like there's like a phew, it's like a big risk, you know, with like skateboarding and stuff too. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, I mean, dude, yeah, I've had injuries, not like. Never like blew out my knees. Never had like any like huge, huge ones. Right. Um, 
for me, it was just like, dude, rolled ankles, yeah. a lot of like bruises, just stuff like that. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I made it out. Like, I, in, in, in like the grand scheme of things, I kind of made it out like scotch free. <laughs> 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 you know, I've had like a couple broken bones, but they were like pretty minor. I think that's what I was getting more towards. Yeah. But yeah, you seem like you're fine, so I'm like, you know. I can walk, I can run, I feel so good, man. Like, that's what yeah. you're probably hoping for as a yeah. skater, like, you know, come out as. Yeah, tear, like wear and tear's been pretty minor. Yeah. Yeah, I have like yeah. a messed up pinky. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sure. My wrist isn't great, you know? I remember uh, Chris tried like skateboarding a couple times, oh, and this guy was just terrible. I was like, don't ever do that again. Oh, well, dude, my first experience on skateboard, <laughs> I was like six or something, and I don't remember who had it, but I, I got down on my chest to go down the driveway, right? Oh, and I was gonna turn onto the sidewalk and I clipped the corner of the grass, knocked out all my teeth. Like yeah. six years old, no teeth. That was my first experience on skateboard. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened to one of our friends too, down like a hill. Yeah, like a driveway. just face first, yeah. 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 Especially yeah. back then too, because like that's when kids were actually outside playing, you know, on bikes, like yeah. dicking around like on skateboards. So it's like, we had nothing to do. We didn't have yeah. computers, iPads, so we had to get in trouble. Yeah, that's why I lived in that generation. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mikey, um, we, we were talking earlier that we we pretty much both know Bedros Kulian, and you were on his podcast, and you know we had him on our podcast. And when we were listening to the episode that you did with him, something that really struck us um, when you were telling your story was you said you weren't very talented, mm. right? So it just it amazes me because. You say you're not talented, but then you get to the X Games to become a professional skater. So I want I want you to talk about that. And then secondly, um, you know, we're talking to Bedros as well too. He even told us he's like, guys, look. He's like, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Mm. But then you look at him, you're like, dude, well, yeah. look yeah. at everything you've accomplished. Like yeah. you're a savage. Like look at all this stuff, right? Yeah. So tell me, like, walk me through that. Like how? I mean, if you weren't talented, how did you become, you know, in the X Games and a pro skater? So yeah, that's a great question. So for me and my group, uh, I was the worst of my friends. Uh, we had a group of like seven guys. Everyone was sponsored by me, right? When we went to do like go skate and do tricks, it took me the longest. Like I was by far not as good as everyone else, right? But there's something that like I think goes into that where like when something comes too easy to somebody, they don't always have the work ethic to push past when it gets difficult, hmm. right? For me, it, it being difficult was every day. So I learned at an early age that like this was the, the amount of effort I had to put in to succeed. And once that became my normal, it was only a matter of time until I outlasted them, mm -hmm. right? And so what ended up happening was out of those seven guys, dude, four of us went pro. And, and then you go to like a, the next year, the next year, the next year, I ended up being bigger pro than every single one of them. My career lasted longer than everybody. It, for me, it's been 100% the work ethic and this like, uh, I don't know if resil maybe resilience is the right word, just the, the I, I was not willing to not succeed. Right. So it was just like, I'm just going to do this more than everyone, and that's just what I had to do to keep up. Yeah, yeah. and that's interesting. Did that like start off like in your household, like with your upbringing? Did you, were your parents very just like big on work ethic? Um, you know what's funny? No. Okay. Like, my mom was, was I actually, both my parents are super creative. My mom was an artist, my dad's a photographer. Gotcha. Uh, my dad definitely worked hard, and maybe it was like me just like seeing it, not hearing it, but, but no, like there was nothing like that my parents told me that was like, you need to work harder than the next guy. There was no like affirmation that was just like outperform, outperform. It was just like, I think for me, I was too stubborn to fail. Mm -hmm. Right, like I just hated losing. Yeah. So like it was just like I'm not willing to give up. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of my thing. Yeah, and then can you maybe walk us through like some of that work ethic, like behind the scenes, what you were doing? Because I don't think a lot of people, even some of the people listening to this, some people that want to be entrepreneurs, they want to build their own business or have their own thing, they don't understand how much work comes into things. Yeah. You know what I mean? How much work it is yes. day in and day out and just how much <laughs> ass kicking yeah. life gives you. you so, so yeah, tell us. Like, so on the skateboard I, side of it, on the skateboard side of it, I skated every single day for 20 years and would skate five hours a day no matter what. And when I was trying a trick, like trying to film a trick, Nine times out of ten, it would take me three, three and a half hours to land that one trick. I was jumping off stuff, right? So like, dude, what it, what I had to go through to land one trick was a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, right? And, and really, like when you take it a step further, like when I was a kid, there was this one instance in, in particular where we were all skating this rail, right? And 
and just to go back to all my friends being better than me, they weren't scared of rails. I was terrified of them. <laughs> and like, we went to this rail and like, they just get there and they're jumping on it and I'm rolling up and I can't try the rail. I'm terrified of it, right? So like, basically they get up, maybe everyone rolls up three times. I've rolled up 10 times at this point. And it almost felt like there was like a physical wall in front of the stairs that would not allow my body to go through it, mm. right? And I'm looking around going, this is so easy for everyone. I'm at 11th try, 12th try. Seriously, I'm at like 50 tries of rolling up. Everyone's landed their trick. I still can't try it, right? And I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm telling myself everything I need to tell myself, you're gonna do this one, you got this. Like back in the roll up, I was like 100% confident that I was gonna do this one. Roll up, all of a sudden body would stop. Like my body would not allow me to do it. And I just kept rolling up for whatever reason until like the 80th try, my body just went off one. Jeez. Right? I have no idea why it did. It just allowed me to do that one time. So you were and just like in your head the whole time? Absolutely in my head, yeah. 100%. I think what happened is I mentally got so exhausted from telling myself, you got this, roll up, you got this, yeah. roll up, that finally it was like, okay, fine, just go, <laughs> you know? And, and what happened that moment where I was like, holy shit, like, if I would have like looked around and saw that like all my friends had only took them three times to try it, and if I would have let myself get to like the 20th try and went, okay, this isn't for me, I shouldn't be doing this, I wouldn't have had any of this. I wouldn't have been a pro skateboarder. Fast forward, I ended up becoming known for skating rails. That wouldn't have happened. All of everything that I've done at this point, I wouldn't have accomplished. Yeah. And for me, I just learned that like, it doesn't matter how long it takes me, all that matters is that I'm willing to keep trying until I do it. Gotcha, yeah. And that I think like that pillar, that happened when I was like 17. And so that was just what I've implemented in like my life. Yeah. It was like a major key almost that like once I realized that, I was like, okay, nothing can stop me. Like I might not know how long it's gonna take me to succeed, but I know I'm gonna succeed. Yeah, I know you're capable of doing it. Yeah, and once that, there's like so much confidence in that. Right, and with that, with that mindset, did, did that carry over like into um, what you're doing now, like as a business owner, um, as a husband, as a father, everything like that? Carry over to everything, yes. Yeah. What I learned from skateboarding, probably that, that kind of point of like, it's not, it, it doesn't matter how long it takes me, that was a huge one. The second one was skating, like, failing becomes very part of our everyday life. Yeah. Like when you look at how many times we mess up, we mess up 95% of the time, yeah. maybe more, right? So I got so used to failing, that became so normal for me that I stopped fearing it. Yeah. And I think those two elements just kind of were naturally ingrained in me through this whole career that like, no matter what I go out and do, it's not, it's not as scary for me. It's like, I, I just know like, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be brutal. It doesn't matter if like things are a struggle for me, all that matters is that I stay in long enough right. to make it happen. Whew. You know? Powerful, that's good. I love that, yeah. I love that, man. I agree, I agree 100% with that. So let's let's go back to when you stopped, you know, your skateboarding career. Because I know that had to be a big, like, just part of your life. It was awful. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, 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 wanna, I wanna dig deep here because it's almost, it's just the analogy of like a professional athlete, you know, it's like most people don't understand like what they do after or just w how they feel just like mentally, emotionally, you know, spiritually. So take me through that, man. Like where were you after that? Have uh, at zero. Okay. It's at zero, man. Like it, it, it's funny. I like as a pro skater, I had a very short career, right? Like t we all have short careers, like a, a okay. really a successful career for us is 10 years. It's okay. short compared to everyone else. Yeah. Why is that though? Because your just body can't keep up right. with the That's kids, gotcha. you know. It's it's a young man's sport. It's like any other athlete. Gotcha. It's just you can't do it the same. Right. So, for us, it's like this strange world of like we found like what we love and have turned it into a career, but it, there's it doesn't last. So it's almost like we're like living on borrowed time. We know it's going to end. We don't want it to end. And there's something in that that's frightening. And for me, it was always trying to figure out how to like transition out. Like, how am I gonna really? What it really came down to is like, how am I gonna make money? Like, I, I figured out a way to make money because I rode a skateboard. I didn't know how to go make money though. Yeah. So there was always this fear for me that was like, I need to figure out how to make money so that like, if anything happens, I get hurt, I lose my sponsors, whatever. Like, I can still continue on this upward trajectory. And so I spent so much time figuring out the financial side of my life and really was like convinced like if I if my money's right, no one can hurt me. That's what I thought, right? Like I don't care if a sponsor lets me go, like if I don't need a sponsor, I'm I'm 
I'm pain free. And what ended up happening was the complete opposite of I lost my sponsors and I wasn't prepared for the emotional roller coaster that was to come by that happening. Gotcha. And it was like, dude, it was like I was kicked in the face. I didn't know what where up was. It was shocking. It was, dude, it was, it was the hardest trial I've ever had in my whole life. I, I just, I didn't realize how many issues I had that I wasn't working through because I was successful in my craft. You know, it was too brutal. It's awful. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, and so something also too. You said that you invested in storage units when you were nineteen. So yeah, tell a little older than that. I was yeah. a little older than that. But, but that uh, sure. so how, how did that like happen? And yeah, what was like the, the outcome of that? Yeah. So so what happened was I started making money, <laughs> right? And my dad couldn't figure out how I was making money. And he was like, "You're you're not skating contest. People are just giving you money to go skate these stairs." Like he did not get it. And he was like, "I'm gonna set up a meeting for you to meet my financial planner." Right? You're going to meet my CFP, my CFA, we're going to figure this out. So he sits me down in this, this office with th this guy, Randy. And you know, Randy sits down, he's like, so what do you do? I'm like, I skateboard. And he's like, okay, like you skate contests? I'm like, no. He's like, do you have an agent? I'm like, no. He's like, what do you do? I'm like, I jump off stairs and rails. <laughs> he's like, okay. Uh, and how much money are you making? He was so like, it, I was so different than like the typical client that he yeah. has that uh, he was just trying to understand it so that he could like help, right? And kind of what happened was his lack of, of knowledge inside of my world meant that he had to really dive in to understand it, which was me telling him about it. And that, that process really kind of at a young age made me feel like I was part of this plan. And so when he was putting together like this custom strategy for myself, I was involved in that process. And kind of what it ended up doing was taught me like financial literacy without even knowing it at a very young age. Wow. And so kind of part of that plan was, and this was due 1920 and back to the me not knowing how to make money, we kind of thought that this could be the most money I ever made, right? So he was like, okay, look, if this is your window to make money, we need to maximize what your money's doing. We need to get your money to work for you, right? So he had me on like an incredibly strict budget so that I could maximize the amount of money I was investing in things that would help build me passive income to help my transition outside of skateboarding. Yeah. And one of those one of those things was real estate. And inside of his firm, they had a real estate division and a real estate fund that was focused on storage units. So I was just blessed in a sense to have somebody at a young age teach me about money yeah. and then bring me what ended up being a very exclusive opportunity that most people don't get. I just thought it was normal. I was like, oh yeah, everyone has this dude who comes in and helps you put together this plan, gives you opportunities. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> and then, you know, I grow up and later realize like most people don't get those type of shots. Exactly. You yeah. Know? yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, and do you still have like the storage units and all that yeah. stuff? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah so awesome. I'm still involved in that fund. Uh, currently it's closed. Um, but yeah, I've been investing in that fund for quite some time yeah. and it's been a, a a great experience Jeez. man but that's just awesome though. like at the age of 19 to like get that type of knowledge and that type oh, of direction and strategy that's a blessing, yeah. totally. and that's, that's why i was like so interested about that story because i was yeah. thinking there had to be someone that it yeah. steered you in the right direction because i was like how does how does one adopt yeah. that type of mindset teach it in, high yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in high school yeah how does that make in high school to work skater figure out invest in store yeah. yeah yeah no and dude at this at this time like there was dude there was nothing on my mind but skateboarding Right, like there was, no, I didn't know, I didn't know I had this like business sense or right. any of that. Like I just just focused on being a better skater, and even when I invested in those things, like I didn't even know the questions to ask. Like if I'm being totally truthful, I went in so blind, right? And if that was, if if, if he wasn't who he was, and let's say like I was just connected with like some not so great guy, right, right. So I could have lost everything. Yeah. I was very fortunate to have a guy that was such a good person at an age where I was very, uh, I was just lacking knowledge yeah. to blindly kind of trust him. Uh, dude, okay. I, I love, got very lucky. Uh, that and it's just a true testament to why mentors are so um, you know, crucial you mm -hmm. know, to success. And it's like, that guy could have like taken advantage of you. Yeah. He could have just, there's just a lot of things he could have done, you, know, you being a kid like that. So yeah. that's awesome, man. It's a yeah. blessing and I'm, I'm glad that it turned out the way it did. Me too. You're going in the right direction doing yeah. big, like, big things. Yeah. So that's gonna take me into my next um, you know, question here is, uh, where was that big aha moment um, with your project that you're currently working on now, uh, Commune, in your business? Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
so back to when I lost my sponsors, um, that was like a dark point for me. It, 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 when I lost my sponsors and ultimately what happened is I lost my career, I felt like I lost my identity. Gotcha. And and in that I didn't realize that there was a lot of like self I was valuing myself based on praise from other people that was typically coming from my career. Yeah. And so I felt like I was going through this like who am I? Why don't I feel loved? It was like I was really going through like a lot of like deep like emotional uh, pain points that I just didn't realize were there. And, and before I had realized it, I was trying to just fill that void of worth, right? And I was just like, okay, how do I get back to feeling good about myself? How do I get back to like Mikey Taylor, the pro skater? And originally my idea was like, I had a shoe sponsor. I was sponsored by DC. DC oh, right? nice, yeah. And uh, I, had, I had a year, year and a half left of my contract. They ended up finding a, a clause in my contract that terminated early, right? And, and so, my year and a half went by overnight. It just ended. And originally, like even though I didn't tell any tell anybody this, I was pissed. Right? I'm like, and my first thought was like, you know what, I'm gonna get back at them. Like I'm gonna start a shoot brand. I'm gonna kill them with success. And like I was on this like, I'm gonna get back at them and I'm gonna fill this void and pain I'm feeling by doing the shoe company and we create the brand, business plan, samples out in China, get samples, looking at a shoe, and I'm going, why am I doing this? <laughs> You know, like, this is not me. Yeah. Like, this is not me. And it was like, right as I come to this, like, I'm just trying to fill this void. I drop the shoe, and I get a call from, like, my best friend who's still a pro skateboarder. And, and four months had gone by from the point of me losing my sponsors. And he was like, yo, man, like, are you okay? <laughs> are you good? What's going on? And, and I kind of just told him, like, dude, I'm lost. Straight up, I'm lost. I don't know what I should do. I'm like throwing all these ideas at like the board trying to like figure out like who I'm supposed to be. Yeah. But just think how many people won't can't admit something like that. Oh you know, dude. Lost. I was dude totally it was I, I was all the way there. I was at kind of in a sense rock bottom with who I was and my identity and how I felt about myself. And I just told him. And he was like I'll never forget man, he was like, dude, look, I get it. Like I don't want to say like I don't, I get it. But I think you need to take a step back and look how blessed you are. Yeah. Right? Like, look at your situation. You're married, you have a house, you have two kids, and I haven't heard you talk about money once. You haven't worked in five, you haven't made a dollar in five months. I haven't even heard you bring up money. Like, dude, are you kidding? Like, I hope I can be in that position when I, when I go through this transition. Like, you're like, none of us have that. Like, dude. And I was like, shit. <laughs> Hang up the phone, feel terrible. Right. But what happened is like it brought me back to like that pain point and that fear that I had in my life for so long of like, how am I going to survive after skating? Right. And like I took that like all the way in to like look at our industry as a whole. And like what we do is we take these kids in an early age, we give them a ton of influence, a ton of money, and then just spit them out and expect them to know how to survive. There's zero guidance, oh, right? right so what you end up seeing is like a lot of these kids have this like huge trajectory, make a huge impact, and then they just like spiral, Yeah. right? And it's like, I know what that pain point feels like because I thought about it every single day for 15 years. I was, I was desperately trying to solve it for myself and, and it kind of just made me feel like, you know what? How can I fix that? Like that conversation that he had with me was like, why am I in this position? Like, why am I the 1% and all my friends and all the generation to come aren't going to be in this position, yeah. right? And this position sucks, right? This was a very painful situation for me. And and I just felt like everyone else that's going to go through it, it's probably going to be even harder for them. Because if I had to figure out the financial harm also, I'd be lost. Yeah. House would be gone. Have to tell my wife, like, I can't provide. It would have been brutal. So I went through this, this just kind of just, I don't know what you want to call it, wormhole in my mind trying to figure out how to solve that, what kind of steps I took to make that a reality. And really when you looked at like the two things that did it for me, it was living on a, on a below my means, right? And the type of things I invested into. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at like my whole portfolio, yes, I've invested in the startups. Yes, I've invested in the stock markets, but the big chunk of my portfolio was invested in real estate. Yeah. That was the vehicle that I always trusted. So that was like kind of where it like hit me of like, dude, this is what you're supposed to do. 
Right. You're supposed to help these guys. You're supposed to help your friends. You're supposed to be a voice and show this next generation how to do this. And and that was real estate for me. Yeah. So that's what led into the idea of wanting to create a real estate fund and and really try to give an opportunity and beyond an opportunity, uh, just create a conversation to the kids that are gonna come after me. Of like, dude, this is shit you need to think of right away. Yeah. Before you go pro, you need to think about this. Right. You know, it's something that's not taught. Like, dude, no. school doesn't teach us how to succeed. No. They don't teach us how to make money. They don't teach us how to invest. They teach us how to work. Absolutely. That's it. And, and remember, like, uh, you know, capitals of uh, the state and stuff like that. Totally, one hundred percent. It's like I know it's easy to blame our parents, but it's like they don't know any better either. No, They're just just, trying their best dude, too. That's one hundred percent, and it's just a different generation. Exactly. Right? You know, and it's like we're blessed with like having platforms to just like this, dude. Yeah. We're able to reach people and talk to them. I didn't have that when I was a kid. Right, so I right. I only looked at the looked up to the pros based on the videos they were in that came out once a year. Yeah. You know, so it's like I didn't have access to know how they were thinking, how they were investing. So, so it was basically all of that that led to me starting this new company. Right. right. Now I want to go back to that dark time you were talking about for 15 years, where you were just in a lot of pain and with having the identity issues and kind of like you know the clarity of like your why and purpose. What would you advocate for somebody that's going through that but doesn't have to go 15 years to kind of like you know solve that? I need to accelerate that somehow because I know everybody goes through it. We went through it as well too. So yeah. Everybody goes through it. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's just such a great question. I think like for us, no one spends time figuring out the why. Like why am I even doing this? Why do I have this drive to be successful? Why do I feel like I need to be loved, right? There's, we don't ever want to like talk about our insecurities. We only want to showcase our strengths. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us, without recognizing them, we never work on them, right? It's hard, it's painful, it right? People don't want to be uncomfortable and working through all these issues is uncomfortable. Yeah. So I think like, one, I totally recognize why people don't go through this path of like making themselves better because it's hard work, right? I think the people that are in these dark places, this is what it was for me. One, recognizing that I wasn't gonna be here forever. Like, like it's really easy to feel like nothing's ever gonna change and when something's painful, your body's telling you you're gonna be like this forever. That's never the case. Our whole life is cycles. Right? We're gonna have great, we're gonna have great moments, and we're gonna have trials. Okay. It, it, our life is seasons, and I'm gonna be put in more trials down the road. And so, when, I think when you look at it as this is just for a moment of time, and it's gonna end, you naturally start thinking, okay, there is light at the end right. of the tunnel. So, what do I need to do to better my path to get to that end? And that's really what it was for me. I just knew it wasn't gonna last, and. I didn't want this to be the defining moment that broke me. I looked at it as like, this is a fork of the road for me. And my life is gonna go on two completely different paths. And I want I want the bright path. I don't yeah. want this like <laughs> shitty life. I just want, want to accept it. Yeah, you know? I love that. I think it's so true with what you said about the, the seasons of life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love that. That's great. Yeah. yeah, and then not only that, it's just that I think, like you said, people don't want to be uncomfortable, right? It's yeah. like we want to showcase our strengths, yeah. our, our wins. That's what social media is all about, yeah. right? And it's just the total opposite. Yeah. I mean, we should be, you know, entitled to be like vulnerable, show yeah. empathy, you know, even work on like our emotional resiliency, yeah. you know, just get better in those aspects because it's not taught and it's yeah. mostly not taught by our parents. They don't know any better. So maybe Dude. that's going to transition over into your adulthood, you know, a hundred percent. I think it's like our, our parents' generation didn't talk about anything. No. Right? Everything was mass. Exactly. So it's our generation that's dealing with the, the effects of that. So to me, it's like, it's our responsibility to not only work through them, but show, it's all about leaving this place better than what we had oh, yeah. at it. Yeah. So it's like, dude, if that's like our purpose to like work through this shit and like become better and like leave that for the next, yeah. then that's our calling. That's, <laughs> you know? yeah. that's what we're here to do. <laughs> so. Love it. So let's talk about like this generation that we're in uh, today. So why is financial freedom so important? And most importantly, why is it so important to acquire some form of passive income? And what are some steps that, you know, millennials, even us can just, you know, start right now to just get going in that right direction? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think one, the biggest difference with our generation that is different than our parents is we were taught security and work and work and work until you retire. And then once you retire, then you get to live your life. That's what I was always told. So play it safe. Play it safe. Got it. What I think our generation's viewpoint on on it is you don't have to work your ass off till 70 and then live your life at 70. You can have it all now. 
you can work now, you can love your job, it can be all encompassing, right? The, the tricky part and what I've always wanted to accomplish was I, I didn't want to have to work. I wanted to choose to work. Even knowing my personality, I'm gonna work for the rest of my life. I, I, I just love it. I didn't want to be told to do it. I wanted to choose. So I was always on this path of like not having to do it and just strictly being passion based. And, and so like that's why I think financial freedom is so cool. You know, and, and I do think there's a lot of people that don't have the luxury of, of feeling like it's possible to work your passion. Right? And most people don't think like they can love their job. Even though I truly believe anyone can love their job, a lot of people don't think that's a reality. Yeah. So for those people, like if you don't want to accept that, I think it's mandatory that you build passive income. So at least you're like in a position to step away. Mm-hmm. And once I understood like the, the true what true financial freedom was, like when I was a kid, I just thought that meant a million bucks. Right. Yeah. I don't know why. I always thought like five million bucks, I'm rich and never to work again. It's <laughs> so wrong. Right? What it really is and what I learned later is if you could build your passive income, which means money's coming in without you working for it, comes in every single month. And if you get that number greater than your expenses, you're financially free. And and it's very simple once you realize that. So then it just becomes, okay, what type of things do I invest in do? And how do I get more money to invest in those things? Because when you start talking about it, passive income is based on a return off your investment. Yeah. And when you start looking at what the actual numbers are, it's not 80% of your investment. It's more like 10, sometimes eight. Mm-hmm. So then it goes, okay, well crap, I need more money. So then it, I, I think you just need to wrap your head around how do I make more money to invest more to build that passive side. Yeah, so is you there know? any like resources that you recommend, like books or like uh, courses or anybody to follow? Yeah, stuff so, so I think it, it, even though investing, the philosophy investing I think goes beyond uh, specific asset classes, it is specific to a degree of what you choose to invest in you. Investing in a real estate is different than investing in the stock market. Yeah. It's different than investing in a startup or in the VC world. So so for me, like if you want to talk about getting started real estate investing, uh, dude, there's a lot of there's a lot of great avenues. Bigger Pockets is a great one. They yeah. have great podcasts, great blogs. Um, for the real estate that I like, which is multifamily, there's a lot of good multifamily podcasts and uh, uh, there's a couple companies that do like teaching, but they teach and then partner with you on the deals. There's a company Think Multifamily, there's a company uh, Apartment Building Investing, there's a company Lifetime Cash Flow. Those are all really good avenues nice. to get started in real estate investing. Nice. And the nice thing about that is like, like for me, I, I made my money skateboarding. So I was looking for things to truly passively invest in with my money. Th- there's things that you can earn equity in without having money. You, it's sweat equity is a thing. Mm-hmm. So if that's a thing you wanna start syndicating, that's a, that's a good start to learn how to be involved in deals when you don't have money. Gotcha, awesome. Right. Yeah, I like that. And so let's say, let's say there's what, like a, a young millennial that has like $10,000 on the right, just capital, like what would you suggest that they invest in or what, what, what should they do with that money? It's <laughs> a great question. Not, not taking it to Vegas. So, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so this is what I would do. I would, I would look at like, okay, $10,000 is, if you're looking at investing $10,000 to get started and to start seeing how this process works, then I would, I'd probably try and find a, a either a fund or a syndication to put it into. Okay. And but I would specifically look for one that uh, focus on educating their investors. Right, a lot of funds uh, make this experience for their investors to kind of learn how the process goes. So I would look for something like that, invest in in a, in a fund where like I was able to see how the process went see what they were doing and have some type of knowledge so that I could go out and do it myself. The reality is $10,000 isn't gonna make or break your life, exactly, exactly. right? So what you need to be focused on is either how do I turn the 10 into 100 or how could I be involved in this where I could take something that will pay me out 50 to 100 yeah. and then roll that over the next time. But I do believe that you need to get started. There's a lot of people that go $10,000 $10, doesn't really make a difference, I'll wait till I get 100,000. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I don't believe that. I think you throw 10,000 in with the with the notion of, I'm gonna go out there and figure out how to get to 100, but now my money's at least working, I'm, I'm starting to see how this model works, 
I just need 100. Yeah. Because yeah. I need 200. Yeah. And 300. Yeah. And a million. <laughs> Again, it goes back to just like, like the old upbringing, the status quo stuff. Just like a lot of people just like sitting and just sitting on their money. Just let, yeah. let it sit on the savings account. It's, yeah. like, it's not doing anything. Nothing. Like, why? Nothing. Because you feel, you feel good that you have that money just psychologically knowing that you know it's just there, but it's not working for you or doing Well, dude, we've just been taught that like a number is security. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a million bucks in the bank. I'm secure. <laughs> no, you're not. That shit is dying on you. Even if you don't touch it, you're losing, right? It's like. Yeah, that was bad, bad guidance, man. <laughs> they didn't hit us with the with the truth on that one. <laughs> that was good stuff, man. Um, so let's let's shift gears here, and um, this way we can get Eric to quiet, uh, quiet down because he's the one that has the piggy bank under his butt. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Are you the saver? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I just gotta give him shit because he's a, he's a minute older. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> low blows okay. always gonna be low blows. Got it. <laughs> so walk us through a day in the life of Mikey Taylor, and I want to know basically. What are some like habits, some rituals or systems that you have implemented into your daily routine that specifically program your mind to play offense and mm-hmm. literally get shit done and move the needle every single day? And just walk us through the lifestyle, like what you do in the morning, midday, and like how do you shut it off at night? <laughs> Great questions. So uh, I'll kind of walk you through things I do, keep myself in that place. Uh, I have a morning routine I do every single morning. Cool. Uh, and that's new for me. That's a, as of the last two years. It was when I was going through this whole career change and trying to find ways to help me work through it. Big one was morning routine. Yeah. And so, uh, so basically, my morning routine is about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, I wake up. I get my coffee. I do. I, I'm doing like a devotional right now. I, last year, I like just wanted to read the whole Bible. Okay. So I had like an app where I read the whole Bible and then it just turned into me doing a devotional. Um, and that's how I start my day. It's about 30 minutes. From that point, I journal. And uh, and the things I'm doing right now, I do five things that I'm thankful for. Uh, I do five affirmations. And then I do this like paragraph of, of how I see myself at my full potential. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, I, I split it up. I either do yoga or... Uh, I serve running, so I'll either run or do yoga depending on the day, and then I wake up my kids, make them breakfast, take them to school, and then I'm off to work. Cool. Nice. Um, and it, it, that, like having that type of structure in the morning, and just going through like things I'm thankful for, how I view myself, how I talk to myself, uh, dude, it plays a huge role in like my energy and oh, yeah. and kind of how I feel about myself. That puts me on the offense. And, and a lot of it goes beyond the morning routine. I think the morning routine helps me be in the same mindset when I leave the door. But even throughout the day, like one thing is how I talk to myself. Like there's there's certain words that I removed that I didn't realize were damaging to my confidence or my mindset or the way I viewed a situation. Yeah. So that was another thing that I do. Um, and then uh, my day to day, like from a, a, a work standpoint, um, it's it's changing right now. W- with Commune, we're I'm back into startup mode, which is like we're all doing multiple roles, and there's a lot going on. So for the last, so right now I'm in capital raise mode. So right now I'm raising money. Gotcha. So uh, for that, that looks like a lot of lunches, dinners, and phone calls, uh, just networking my face off getting in front of people, pitching them, following up is where the majority of my time spent. Um, when I get home and have to turn it off, that is my struggle. It just, me by nature, I'm I'm so consumed by what I'm doing that it's difficult for me to turn it off. And it's something that like, I use that morning routine to help myself when I talk about my perfect, me at my full potential. One of the key things is being present with my kids yeah. and them getting my full attention. I have to tell myself that every day because that's not normal for me. And it's like, I wish it wasn't, or, or, or I wish it was, and I wish it was easier for me to like be that, but that's my struggle, so I recognize it and work on it. So um, you just kind of pretty much like turn your phone off like, oh, your home, like with your kids? Or yeah, you know what, dude, yes, yes. For me, it's, it goes a step further. I'll have my phone away. I'll be with my kids, nice. and I'm thinking about work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, just in my hard. mind doesn't turn off. Yeah, so it's like yeah, what I, I just have these like things where it's like, and when it happens, I'm getting better at stopping myself and going back to being present. So like, if you look at like the lag time, right? Or like the, the time I've spent drifting off. Like let's say I drift off for 30 minutes before I catch it. The more I practice it, the shorter that time frame gets. 
So I'm getting just more efficient with, okay, I might like think about work for five minutes, stop, okay, back to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like an ever, it's just a process, it's kind of never ending. Right, right. You know? Yeah, it's like, out of all the people we just interviewed, like they literally say the same thing, right? Like it's just like, they're, they, they're present, you know, but it's like there's still something towards like they're thinking about work or just like the next thing yeah. or social media or something, yeah. it's just like, I get it. And yeah. I think a lot of it goes back to like what you said in the beginning, man. You just love working. Mm -hmm. you, know? yeah. you just love what you do. So it's just. You know, it's you given know, a curse. Yeah, right? it is. Even though you have to be yeah. present, I mean, it's just you're thinking about stuff because you love it. It's like, it's yeah. a part of you. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. part of your lifestyle. 100%. So, yeah. And right. it's like something that like has been like a key to my success. Absolutely. Right? Right. right? But like. I don't want to be the dude who's just successful in business. Exactly. And I got to be a good dad. That's yeah. like a, I think goes further than anything I do in business. Absolutely. So it's like, I just, it's just harder for me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I love the whole morning routine thing, man. Like we're big on that. Like I've been yeah. doing that for the last three years. Game changer, game changer just really just gets me really clear and focused to yeah. take care of myself most importantly. But I'm going to try what you said to write the paragraph of like, you know, that outlook on your full, full potential. Cause yeah. that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know where I got that from? Yeah. That's new for me. This is as of the last four months. And uh, I got it from Ed Milet. Oh, I was listening nice to a right. podcast on him, and uh, someone was like asking him, like, what his motivation is, or something like that. And he was like, look, I have this idea that when I die, I meet my, my perfect self. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Me at full potential, I meet. And I don't want to not recognize that person. I want to, like, see that person to be as close to that person as possible. And it was just like that idea. I was like, you know what? I should probably like recognize what my perfect self is, tell myself what my perfect self is every single day yeah. so that I subconsciously mimic what I'm trying to be. Yeah. And I started doing that in like, I think it's played a, uh, a huge role in like where I'm headed. Yeah, so continue yeah. to challenge you yeah. to push you for better. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's say you woke up one morning, Mikey, um, during your morning routine, you got a weird little buzz on your phone and <laughs> it was uh, from Instagram. So they're like, Mikey, I, I love what you're doing. Man, you are inspiring a lot of people. You have a great purpose, the mission, everything. I'm gonna grant you a one minute viral video on Instagram. It's gonna reach billions and billions of people. So what would that video be and what would be the reason behind it? Gosh, <laughs> you hit me with like such good ones. <laughs> oh man, if I had to make a video that's gonna go viral. Um, it could be anything. What a great, question the first thing that comes to my head and I wish like I had if I really got that opportunity I think I would spend a lot of time making sure this is great <laughs> but uh, I mean dude for me what it was for me that I spent a lot of time working through was uh, I was worried about what other people thought of me and I spent a lot of time trying to please other people and so every decision I, I made was based on how you felt about it yeah. and how you felt about it. And, and what happened is I wasn't building myself. I, I, there was no true me. And, and it took me a long time to become comfortable with myself. And I think that would be kind of the premise of what that video would be, was telling people it, you're, you're exactly who you should be. Yeah. Like, you be comfortable with who you are. Don't worry about what other people think of you. Just know that you're valuable. You're wonderful. You can accomplish anything you want to do. Have belief and confidence in yourself. And don't worry about this guy over here. Yeah. Don't worry about that guy. Just push forward on what you want to do. Oh, I think it's almost I like just like remove the mask and just go at it. Yeah. Yourself. It's just hard. I mean, dude, yeah. when you're a kid, man, it's oh, like it's, it's hard, hard to do that. It it it's is. like, I wish I could do it at 18, yeah. but I wasn't there. Yeah. I had to wait until I was 26. Exactly. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially these days, man, with social media, how everyone's it's exposed worse. to it's something perfect. that's worse. It's, it's, it's constant comparison, putting people on pedestals, constantly looking up, measuring themselves against people. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Does, does that kind of fear you with like your kids just going forward? Um, you know what? I don't want to say fears, fears me. I know it's, I know that our, the next generation is going to have a different type of struggle because of being born in social media. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we spend a lot of time trying to build them up, yeah. right? Like Steve Weatherford hit me with just such a beautiful one last week. He was saying that he doesn't let his kids say, I can't. They're yeah. not allowed to say it. If they're going to say, I can't, it has to be followed by yet. I can't yet. And there's certain things that, that I'm now focusing on the way I talk to my kids so that they feel like anything's possible, so that they're valued, that they're loved, that that it doesn't matter what other people view as long as like 
they have value in themselves, then I guess in theory, all the bullshit that comes along with social media, they they could be prone to it. Right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, dude, our generation is the first generation having to parent kids through this. Like, we're trying to figure it out also. Yeah, exactly. There's no like, yeah. on this no. or anything like that. No. That's gold though, man. I think even too for like us, like as adults, just even saying that, I can't, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Know, I'm saying that. it now too. Yeah. Like, And I was even like, I was doing a podcast with Steve and he hit me with that one. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is wonderful. <laughs> I'm using that. I'm not saying it again. 10 minutes later, dude, I go, oh no, 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 no. There was another one. He said that he never says I, I have to. He says I get to. Oh, I'm like, that was, I'm like, dude, dad, I, I'm running that one. And then we start yeah. talking. I'm like, ah, I, I got to go do this. And he goes, you get to do this. Wow. I'm like, ah, I got to throw again. Like, like, you're, you're blessed. Yeah. You're I mean, dude, a lot of it just goes back to how we talk about ourselves, yeah. right? It's like, if we are constantly telling ourselves this positive kind of affirmation or positive way of speaking, the way we look at situations are positive. Yeah. And, it, and it changes the way you move through those trials, yeah. right? Like if you look at a situation as like, okay, this is a situation, there's gonna be a blessing out of it, I'm not sure what it is, but like, I'm gonna look for the pros, where the other person goes, my life's over, what? I, you're gonna see two different trajectories, one's going up, one's going down. Right. You know, right. so I think a big one is like, you, people really need to know the power of that. Oh, yeah. The glass half full is so powerful. Yeah. It's yeah. so powerful. That, that's like that's one thing that we're so big on with like our, our uh, coaching students that are they're wanting to be entrepreneurs and build a, build a business to really start focusing on the mindset first. That's yeah. the foundation. It's yeah. like use that reframing principle. You know, reframe everything into a blessing or into a positive. Yeah. I promise you, man, that journey is going to be so much smoother. It, it's <laughs> so true. And look, like I, I like I'm I'm a skater. Like we don't believe in any of that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean, truthful. Yeah. Like it, it's like it's a very like raw and like core group. Yeah. And so, like, whenever I hear people talk about that, I thought it was bogus. Right. I was like, dude, that is right. bullshit. Yeah. Right? It wasn't until I was broken to where, like, I had to, like, do something. And then to see what it ended up doing for my career, what it ended up doing for my life, it was life it was life changing yeah. you know yeah. it, it's so powerful yes, it really is i'm about to steal all those uh things from steve those, those i stole them too yeah. still <laughs> no, i pass them along I get steve on the podcast oh, yeah. he, you'll love him yeah. you'll love him yeah he's so good like it, just to tell you the ones that like i was doing before that i took try out of my dictionary it's do i don't say i'm gonna try this i'm gonna do this yeah i don't it's not i i i have to i, I, I get, get to, to. i like that i lot. can't yet which i do i'm running on my yeah. kids tough now <laughs> don't appreciate you know? that yeah <laughs> yeah awesome. so mikey was it was there like a favorite failure or loss in 2018 that really turned into like a huge lesson for you going into 2019 that you feel is going to be a big payoff in some way <sighs> man um this guy came up with all the questions. This is a phenomenal <laughs> question. To tell you the truth, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I always get stumped on these questions because when I fail at things, to go back to skating, failing and messing up became so normal that like when it happens, seriously, it's look at it, what I learned from, move on, and it's out of sight, out of mind. So like when, when I first asked that, I always go through this like panic of like, have I failed before? Like, it takes me a while to remember. Yeah. Uh, and, and yes, I fail every single day. Uh, 2018, uh, oh man, what was the big failure of 2018? Let's see. Man, I'm going to struggle trying to figure this out. I really am. We could always circle back to it. Oh, we had like the Jeopardy like, tune on. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shoot, man, that's gonna be a. I'm gonna have to really think about that. Yeah, yeah. Circle, back. circle back. Yeah, circle back. Yeah. I know it's gonna hit me. I'm gonna leave here and go. Oh, I mean, I failed yesterday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh this huge loss. Um. Yeah, that wasn't even a. Yeah. I invested in this company, <laughs> right? Invested in this company, and uh, and it didn't work. I I haven't lost all my money, but uh, at, from the position I took, I'm I'm it's. It's been valued at 50% of what I bought in at. Mm. But if you look on paper, that was a failure, right? But what I started doing, which maybe helped, and now maybe this isn't a failure, I started when I make big decisions, a lot of time when I'm investing. If I'm gonna invest in something, I write down all the reasons why I'm investing oh. in it. So that if something goes wrong, I could look back and go, what did I 
did the investment just go wrong or did I miss something on, on the reason why I did it? Mm. And when I went back, every decision I made to, that made me do it, I still would have done it. In hindsight, I look back and I'm like, oh man, yeah, this was a mess, this was a mess, this was a mess. Um, but I lost some money. <laughs> lost money, I guess I can take that one as a failure. I did lose money. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good. I, I like I like the little trick of just writing it down. You know, just all the that was big day for me. That. Yeah, that was big day for me. And it's not just investing. I think anytime you're you're taking a position or, or something that's uh, big, write down why you're doing it. Yeah, right. like because dude, if you're gonna fail, you need to learn why you're failing. Yeah. Right. So like for me, I think that's why it ties a, a lot to investing. I I'm gonna continue to invest, and with investing, you don't win every time. Right. You win and you have losses. Yeah. You just need more wins and losses. So like I'm always trying to go back and, and, and figure out why that went wrong, what I could have done better to get me to a point where it's truly more, you know. Uh, and that's been a big, that's been a big tool. Yeah. That's really helped. That's awesome, absolutely, man. So Mikey, uh, I want to ask you, do, what is your dark side or shadow that you have? I feel like every every one of us has some sort of dark side or like a shadow. Maybe we don't sit there and put it out there, right? Because it's quote unquote, you know, wrong to do, which. I think it's it's always better to just lay it all out, you know, be real, authentic. I think we spoke about this before we even started, but I mean, do you have like a dark side to you, like a shadow that's like kind of like over, just kind of like over you and stuff at, at times? Um, just so I know I'm totally clear on the question. Uh, what do you mean by shadow? Like, like do I have insecurities? I have things I struggle with? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Absolutely. That, that could be a form of that. Like we all, like the analogy is always like, with, you have like a little voice in your head, right? Like you have like the oh, angel sh- or the devil. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so naturally I I go to worst case scenario. Okay. I fear is like, I've, I've, been, I've been learning how to control fear for a long time. Right. And, and my mom's naturally very fearful. Her mom was super fearful. So just everything that I picked up as a kid was always worst case scenario. So for me, when something happens, the first thing I that happens to me is there's some type of fear base. Yeah. I'm gonna lose everything, this is gonna be bad, This pod, people are gonna think this podcast is shitty. It's always something negative for me. Uh, and so what I've gotten a lot better at is recognizing that about me, that like fear plays a big part of my first reaction. Okay. And to take the emotional side of that out, kind of talk myself up and then move forward um, would probably be a struggle. Another one, uh, gosh, I don't know if it's shadow, but I, well, maybe it is shadow. I am naturally very selfish. Okay. I'm a very selfish person. Gotcha. And, and I picked an industry as a pro skateboarder that is incredibly selfish. Mm-hmm. So. So kind of when you look at my struggles, I'm selfish. Uh, I find my, my love language is affirmation. Okay. So it's like without control over that, you could see how my personality could spiral, right? I need people to praise me. I need to hear the people love me. I need to be on this like psychopath to like feel this, this feeling of love. And I'm super selfish, <laughs> right? So th- those I think are my struggles okay. and things I work on. Yeah. Um. Uh, and dude, yeah, dude, I have insecurities just like everybody else Absolutely. that try to hold me back. Absolutely. And I think like the further I go down this road, it's and maybe that's what people lose lose track of. It's not that my insecurities go away; they really don't. No. It's that I've learned how to control those insecurities better. Right? right? My insecurities still talk to me every day. You're a shitty father. You don't pay attention to your kids. You're a bad husband. You're gonna lose all this money. This business isn't gonna be shit. Like my insecurities are definitely there. I just have learned tools to go. You're just an insecurity. Okay. You're not reality. Okay. You don't define me. This isn't who I am. You know. And it's just I'm just getting better and better at that. I got so yeah. 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 so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Mikey. So let's say that for some reason the skateboard gods needed you to leave the planet for ten years. And they can't tell you why, but they just need your presence over there, the skateboard gods. And you have to leave your family, your friends, your business, your community, your loved ones for 10 years. What would be that last paragraph to everybody before you left the planet? Whose question? Was this your idea? Oh, that was <laughs> Jeez. Yes. <laughs> uh, man, my last paragraph. You're coming back, though, in 10 years. I'm coming back? Man. Oh, 
oh man, I think what I would say to them, to my loved ones, my friends, I would say, I'm not going to see you for 10 years. When I see you, I want to not even recognize you. I want you guys to be so much better than the person I'm looking at that like I'm blown away and having to re meet you as people because mm -hmm. you've done so much in 10 years. Do enough to where I can't even recognize you. Yeah. I think that's what, yeah. what I tell them. Yeah. That's fine. I like that. Yeah. I like it. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna hit you with another, another like, Here we go. analogy. Here we go. Here we go. So let's say, well, I want to take you back to, you know, let's say you were going, you were in the skate park, and it was, you know, just kind of a dark, you know, setting. I'm stopping you. I'm stopping you. I'm totally stopping you. I gotta keep going. Uh, so, no, I'm stopping you because okay, I'm gonna forget. Go for, go I'm for stopping it. you. Go for it. Do you know your? Are you gonna remember your question? I know. A failure. Yeah. One of the failures. Okay. I, I did a deal with somebody this year. Uh huh and came to terms before it was under contract and then as it was under contract they renegotiated terms on me and uh, oh, okay. that was a that was a uh, failure in a sense where I know better and know to get all the deal you get the deal done then move forward I didn't yeah. do that okay uh, that was a failure. I don't normally do that, but that was a 2018 failure. Yeah, anyway, that was sorry. a good one though. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad I came back. Well, yeah. I came back. Yeah. Okay, so Let's say you were, you know, in in a skate park. It was late at night, and you were all by yourself. Okay. And then there was another kid there that was a twenty-year-old version of you. What would you say that twenty-year-old version of Mikey Taylor, if you had the opportunity to? Oh, is it actually me? Yeah. Ooh, what a good question. Uh, one, it would go back to like the Instagram viral. I would say, don't stop trying to impress everyone around you. Don't try to find, uh, don't try to fit into this industry. Okay. Be yourself, build your brand, and and start paying attention to the business side. It okay. took me a long time to pay attention to the business side. I, I was 26. Mm -hmm. If I could have started building that out at 19, right. oh, yeah, right. yo, Man. you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think those would be the two things. Okay. But the big one for me is like with skating, I was, I was so scared to be different because, dude, I'm different than, than the skaters in the industry. Absolutely. I, I absolutely am. Yeah. And and not for better or for worse, I'm just different. Like, I I wanted to be successful. I wanted to plan all this out. Most skaters, that's not cool, right? Skaters typically are, like, super creative, and it's all about expressing. And I looked at skating as a business, mm. right? And I was always so scared yeah, to put that sure. out there that I I never was felt truly like myself. And if I would have just accepted that as a kid and actually like push forward, you know, I think I would have been so much more successful. Yeah. I think I could have accomplished ten times the amount I did. Yeah, I think yeah. That's, man, that's awesome. Like you said that like you looked at it as a business, and everybody else is like they don't. Yeah, like you said, like it's rare. Mm -hmm. So well, it's not cool. Like yeah, you're yeah. supposed to love skating. Like yeah. you're not supposed. This isn't about making money. Like yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, you know, for me it was just like. What ended up happening is I started hating skating. <laughs> is, is is what happened? Like I, I found skating. I was passionate about skating, and when skating turns into your career, it changes. Right? There's a whole lot of new things that are added to your plate that you didn't sign up for, oh, yeah. and you start resenting it. And I had to find something new to love. And what I ended up loving was the business side of skateboarding, the business side of my brand, the business side of selling product, and that became my new passion. Mm. So, and, and then it was like, I just didn't want to tell anybody that. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> dude, it was funny, man. Like, I, I would talk differently around skaters. Like, that was like a seat, it was like a split personality, <laughs> yeah. you know? So. So with all the experience you've had, uh, all the ups and downs, uh, just everything that you've learned up until this day with life, um, what would you say like that you're most proud of, most grateful for, and just most excited about going forward? And I want to ask you, like, what you, is there anything you're missing currently in your life? Oh, I'm missing. Um, what am I missing in my life? Uh, I'm missing a personal assistant. If anybody's out there, no, I'm just uh, I mean, I don't want to say there's things I'm missing. There's things that uh, aren't firing on all cylinders um, that I'm that I'll have and get better at. Um, I think all the things that truly matter to me and my life and what I want to complete in my life. All the things are in place. Uh, I'm not perfect at all those, but uh, I, I think all the all the key elements are there. Yeah. Um, 
What was the other question? What, what are you most grateful for and just looking forward to and excited about? Oh man, the thing I'm most grateful for, um, I'm probably the most grateful for my wife. To tell you the truth, she she was, so we've been dating while I was supposed to be working. She was dating me when I was a crazy lunatic. I was asshole, I guess. Yeah, yeah we've, we, we've been married now, this summer we'll be married nine years, we dated five and a half for that. And so, not only was she with me through a very dark time, she is, is like, she's just incredible. She works as hard on our marriage as, as I do. And when you have a partner that's willing to work on it, you're truly blessed. Yeah. And, and I think most people kind of give up when times get hard. And dude, it's like the way I looked at skating, the way I look at business is how she looks at our marriage. She's like, look, I am willing to do anything to make this succeed. We'll work on it, we'll struggle together, we'll have great times together. And I think I'm most blessed to have, be married to somebody that like, I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about us splitting up. Yeah. I know that there's gonna be hard times. I know there's gonna be great times. And I know I have somebody that's there to like, be in the the streets with me, just grinding it out. Yeah, that's fucking. Which is probably my, like my biggest team. blessing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have like partner in crime. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's Thanks really cool. That. Yeah. Is there any like two? Is there like two or three books that you could recommend that have like really just changed your outlook with like business mindset? I mean, leadership, anything that you yep. could recommend to listeners? Yes. Uh, the the books, the four books that have been the most influential to me, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay. Think and Grow Rich. Um, David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me. Oh, I just read that. Yeah, yeah. It's Un- good, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. You need to start tonight. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. Yeah. That book probably did more for me, and I read it a month ago, yeah. than any book in my life. Yeah. It was just okay. like okay. incredible. Yeah. Um, and then Principles. Ah, yeah. Principles is incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. 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 It was incredible. That one, if you're like, Think and Grow Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Can't Hurt Me, uh, anyone, I think, can enjoy those books, regardless if you're an entrepreneur or not. Uh, uh, Principles is very focused on business. So that book, depending on who you are, may or may not resonate with you. For me, it was gold. Yeah, I liked it too. Yeah. Cool, those those are all good books. So before we ask the last question, um, I just wanna commend you. I know this is coming from Big Brother by one minute, but I beat him to the punch, man. I beat him to the punch. I just wanna say thanks so much for coming on this podcast. It's been a pleasure talking to you, learning from you, your wisdom, everything that you're doing, man. Just uh, being vulnerable and open, you know, to share, you know, your ups and downs in life and your transparency and just everything, man. You know, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's just been cool just getting to know you as a person, man. Like, yeah, I just yeah. feel like that. Like after this, like, man, we can just go hang out or something. Yeah. Like, have a beer together one of these days. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to skip work. Yeah. 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 Hey, I do. I appreciate being here. I really do. Thank you. So, what does it mean to Mikey Taylor to live a dynamic lifestyle? Is this your last question? Last question. That's the name of the show. Oh man, <laughs> for me, it's balance. I think it's 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 truly having balance in in the aspects that that I'm trying to fill in my life. Okay. And I think that's that's what it is for me. Like making sure, like on the business side, I'm firing full cylinders. On the on my marriage and and me as a father firing on full cylinders on giving back full cylinders. I think it's just being balanced in each department. Yeah, love that. I tend to go heavy in one. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of balance too, yeah. so I like that. Yeah. So, is there anything that our our listeners, you know, can you know support you on, or just Chris and I that you have like right now that's going on that's really big or anything? Oh man. Um, so. Really, the, the where all my where there's two parts of where my focus goes, but the majority of my focus goes into commune, okay. which is where real estate investing. Yeah. Um, so if you if you want to start real estate investing, there's two parts of it. You can be a credit investor or a non-accredited investor. Right now, we can only accept accredited investors. So if you're looking for real estate investing, do uh, I'd love for you to check our company out. Okay. If you're non-accredited, uh, the SEC makes it really tricky to. Uh, create a fund for that. We are working on it. Uh, the more the merrier, how I feel. So if that's like an interest of yours, uh, you can find me at, on Instagram at Mikey Taylor and you'll find everything else I'm doing. Um, and then I have a podcast as well, which nice. w- would be great if you guys came on. Uh, it's Avni Intelligence. Okay. Uh, you can find you can find everything through my Instagram. So find okay. me, 
find everything else. Uh, and those are like my, the two things I do. Yeah, awesome, man. right on, man. So we'll have that all plugged in the show notes. Once again, Mikey, thank you again for coming on, man. It's been awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, thank Appreciate you, guys. It. Okay, Appreciate guys, until next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this podcast video. If you guys are interested in watching and listening to more of our podcasts, make sure to click the link in the description box below. We have a ton of awesome podcasts. I mean, we're up to like 130 right now. We're giving one out every single week and we're actually bringing on some of the big guests um, out there and everything is really centered around lifestyle habits, systems, overcoming adversity, how someone got from point A to point B, and some of the rituals um, and lessons learned throughout that entire journey. So you guys will gain a lot of value from these podcasts, whether it's, whether it's through audio or here on, on YouTube, okay? So make sure to check out the link in the description box and we'll see you guys in the next episode.